Now, this entire Kanye and Drake situation has been escalating very quickly, and at the time of me recording this video, they're both trending on Twitter with almost 1 million tweets combined. Let's just say that Kanye is uh, currently spilling the beans and he's doing it with no filter whatsoever. But in this video, I want to talk about the real reason why Drake and Kanye West are beefing. Because everyone is obviously so focused on the things he's saying on Twitter, one of them being that Drake called him up after his rant and threatened him, but I haven't seen too many people discussing why this is even happening in the first place. So let's talk about the real reason why Drake and Kanye West are actually beefing. So to answer this question, we gotta go back to when Kanye was recording 808's Heartbreak in Hawaii back in 2008 because that's pretty much the start of their friendship. Drake was a new name in the game back then and according to Drake himself, Kanye was hands down the most influential person in his life as far as a musician went. Regarding that, this is what he said in an interview with MTV back in 2009, We always, always, always took the time to listen to Kanye's music and appreciate it beyond. We search the samples and find out where his inspiration came from because he has one of the best ears in music, period. He knows how to recognize recognize great music that's not his. He knows how to utilize great sounds and great music. So before I met him, I had the utmost respect for Kanye West. I'd even go as far as to say he's the most influential person as far as a musician that I'd ever had in my life. And that same year before Drake said this, he released his So Far Gone project where he made sure to show the level of appreciation he had for Kanye by rapping on one of his instrumentals from 808's Heartbreak. Why do I feel so alone? Like everybody passing through the studio is in character as if he acting out a movie role. Even before this, he also rapped on the Barry Bonds instrumental from Graduation. It's what y'all all been waiting for, ain't it? Your weekly entertainment. For me to get a hold of this beat and go ahead and claim it. Ye was also the director for the Best I Ever Had music video, which was actually his first breakout hit. Now, although both of them appeared on two songs together in 2009, one of them being Forever and the second one being a song titled Digital Girl by Jamie Foxx, their first real collaboration was when Kanye produced and wrote the melody for Find Your Love that was on Thank Me Later. I'm more than just an option. Hey, hey, hey. Refuse to be forgotten. Now regarding this collaboration, one thing Kanye said was that he was fine with writing the track for Drake, but that was only until he got too big. Now I think you know what this means. This was the point where Drizzy was no longer the little homie who was inspired by Kanye. He was actually coming for the throne and coincidentally enough, he did mention in an interview how he wanted to not only be as good as Kanye, but actually surpass him. Let's talk about the first official public diss that came from Drake himself. In an interview with Tim Westwood TV back in 2011 where he was talking about a supposed album that was in the works with the one and only Lil Wayne, there's a part in the interview where he sneaked this is both Jay-Z and Kanye, alluding to the fact that they might have stolen the idea behind creating a collaborative project. I mean, I'd like, I'd like, I'd, you know, that we still gotta do that album. Yes, yes, you still gotta do that some album. some other guys are coming out with the album too. There's two other guys that are coming out okay. with together. As you could hear, he mentions two other guys making an album and then he says this. Two other rappers that are coming out with an album together. I don't know where they got that idea, but... I'm very slow. Could you just break it down a bit? And then later that same year, Drake dropped a subliminal diss towards both Jay-Z and Kanye on the track I'm All One by DJ Khaled, and this is what he said. Hate the rumors, hate the bullshit, hate these fucking allegations. I'm just feeling like the throne is for the taking. Watch me take All I Hate the rumors, hate the bullshit, hate these fucking allegations. I'm just feeling like the throne is for the taking. Watch me take it. And then of course, watch me take it, meaning watch me take the throne, aka watch the throne. As you can see, we went from Drake being this innocent rapper that was coming up, who saw Ye as his number one inspiration as a musician goes to then Drake having Kanye writing the melody for one of his songs and also producing it to now dropping subliminal disses talking about watch me take the throne. Ooh. Let's just say that shit changed quickly, but let's keep talking. So another thing that also made this entire situation escalate was Drake getting removed from All of the Lights. All of the Lights is of course a track from My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy that dropped back in 2010. A couple months prior to the project dropping, a snippet of the song leaked on the internet. Bad decisions, good intentions, man, I'm riding Weezy with me. I just left out of the strip club, made 5,000 look like 50. And when the final version of the track actually came out, Drake's verse was nowhere to be found. Regarding him getting removed, this is what he had to say about that. Well, I wanted to ask you about was all the lights like we had heard a leak of it and you were on the record and then the final came out and you weren't on it do you know why you weren't on the final version and or do you feel a way about it um no i mean kanye's creative process is ever changing you know i mean he's one of those guys we we make music differently you know i i i make what comes to me and i hate changing it you know whereas yale changed something 30 or 40 times to get it perfect and i mean it teach their own mm -hmm. and you know the change was to put all those people on it and and I, and and I wasn't one of them that's you know it's completely okay yeah. 
I think you and me heard the same thing. I mean, Drake was obviously feeling some type of way because his role model in music decided to remove his verse from the original track. As a young and new artist coming up in the game, he'd be shooting himself in the foot by expressing his true feelings about that. This is something that definitely stuck with him, and that's why exactly six years after this, Drake returned the favor by removing both Kanye and Jay-Z from the original version of Pop Style from Views. Regarding the reasoning for why he did it, this is what Drake said. It was really, I just was trying to get Ye on it at first, and Ye just sent it to me like that, like, yo, Jay, Jay kind of just did my first few lines for me, and he was just here, and that's how we, you know, flexed it. And then he continued and said this. I just dealt with it accordingly, and, um, you know, it didn't exactly play out how, how I mm. would have wanted it to as far as, like, you know, business or whatever goes, so mm. I just, uh, just figured it would be easier to go with my version. Let's not forget that Drake is a very calculated person and I really believe that he did remove both of them from the track as him returning the favor to Kanye. And also one interesting thing about this is when Drake was talking about this, Drake was only concerned with making sure people knew how much Jay inspired him as a way to pay homage. And funny enough, Kanye was left out of that conversation. I've expressed my admiration and respect for Jay countless times. Mm. That'll never change. We just fall on opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to the rap world. And then moving on to 2013 when Ye was performing in OVO Fest and he paid homage to Drake saying that Watch the Throne would have never happened if it wasn't for Drizzy. That same year, Drizzy spoke about his and Kanye's relationship in an interview with Billboard saying that their relationship had slowly been falling out. One of the more obvious reasons for this could of course be the Pusha T and Drake beef. Now this is not something he mentioned, but using common sense I think we all could figure this one out. And only a couple months after that in early 2014, Drake had an interview with Rolling Stone where he actually criticized Yeezus and talked about how he has mixed feelings about the project. Even though on the surface there wasn't really any malicious intent with what he said, it could also be seen as a little jab. Now only two days after that Kanye responded to what Drake said but he was really coming from a place of love saying that the magazines are the ones to blame because they are going out of their way to turn both of them against each other. And I'm gonna tell you what it is, what it is in the magazines. They always be trying to pit niggas against each other and that ain't going down no more. After this, a couple things happened, one of them being Blessings, which is a song by Big Sean that both Kanye and Drake were featured on, and then Ye also mentioned a supposed collab project that was in the works with Drake. And then a year later, Drake released Summer 16, where he was playfully mentioning how he had a bigger pool than Ye. Now, let's move on to the more groundbreaking things that happened in their beef that escalated things rather quickly. So do you remember how at the end of 2016, Kanye had a quote unquote mental breakdown on stage where he was ranting on a lot of things, one of them being this. Khaled and Drake and Radio and Doc and 92.3 and everybody, is it just me or did you hear that song so many times? You see what I pay for free. We did actually get a response from Drake and in this response, one concern he had was the fact that him and Kanye were so much buddy buddy and him getting mentioned on that stage rant really threw him off. Now things were quiet for a long time after this until it took a positive turn and Kanye was of course featured on More Life. Now this is when we enter a new stage of their beef so let's talk about it. Even though this was a case of collateral damage, considering everything we know about the history between these two, I think we could say with conviction that Drake wouldn't want it any other way. Only four days after this, Pusha T wanted all the smoke and went absolutely crazy on the story of ID Don, where he surprisingly had some secret information that Drake was hiding a son. You are hiding a child. Let that boy come home. Deadbeat motherfucker playing border patrol. Ooh. The entire Pusha T and Drake beef had at this point been going on for a couple years, and it was only a matter of time before Ye got dragged into it. What do you really think? the nigga that's making your beats i've done things for him i thought that he never would need father had to stretch his hands out and get it from me see this is where things get a little complicated because people were now accusing Ye of being the person who gave pusha t the secret information and regarding those allegations of course he denied it but drake himself had a couple things to say about that because according to him kanye was the only person who knew about his son while they were both in wyoming drake decided to play him the outro track of scorpion which is march 14th where he reveals to the world about his secret son after this, things just kept on escalating and escalating, and it wasn't until September of this year where Drake decided to say this on a track with French Montana. Two open seats, we flying in seven and pepper the beach. 
Yeah, keeping it G. I told her don't win on 350s round me. This was the last groundbreaking thing that happened as far as music goes. But as we speak, or should I say, as Blackie speaks, you've seen this very extensive Twitter rant by Kanye where he said a lot of shocking things that's making people speculate. People are currently just looking for answers. And after you've heard me talk about the almost one decade long history between these guys, if we're gonna try to summarize the real reason as to why they're beefing in the first place, I want you to look at this as a very complicated, but of course, public relationship. In the beginning, Drake was purely the little homie looking up to his idol Ye. Kanye himself never really suspected that he would have became so big until Find Your Love. And since we're talking about two rappers in hip hop, competition is always inevitable. I would see Kanye's Twitter rant as the nail in the coffin because keep in mind, out of both of these guys, one was clearly way more loving towards the other and in this situation, Ye was that one. After thoroughly going through their history, it's very clear that the moment when Drake snapped was when Kanye removed him out of all of the lights. We then saw him returning to favor on Pop Style. We then saw him on that Tim Westwood interview dissing both Ye and Jay-Z. That was around the time when he started seeing Kanye as nothing but competition and that's when Drake truly lost his appreciation for him. And then the beef with Pusha T was of course a very destructive event for their friendship. That's when Kanye himself realized that he has to be loyal towards the ones who are loyal to him and whether or not he did actually reveal that information about Drake's son. We're talking about words against words here. Whoever you want to believe, it's completely up to you. Now that's pretty much the entire history behind this Kanye West and Drake beef. Do you think I missed any key events here? And regarding this entire beef, who are you honestly rocking with in this situation? Kanye or Drake? I want you to give me your honest opinion on this and of course, let's have a discussion about this.